good evening everyone uh, dignitaries on the dais uh, mr uh, shri girish chandra murmu ladies and gentlemen it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the wagbakri ama center for governance presentation session on public sector audit and corporate governance as all know in today's world how important corporate governance is for organizations in line with this today we have the privilege of hosting shri girish chandra murmu the comptroller and auditor general of india for this session a personality like him doesn't require an introduction but let me try to tell you about him in brief shri girish chandra murmu assumed office as the comptroller and auditor general of india on 8th august 2020 prior to this we are pr very proud that he was the first lieutenant governor of the union territory of jammu and kashmir before moving to jammu and kashmir he served in various capacities in gov of government of india such as secretary to the department of expenditure special and additional secretary in the department of financial services and department of revenue and joint secretary in the department of expenditure before his tenure at the center shri murmu has served as on important assignments in the state government of gujarat also he holds a post graduate in political science from utkal university he holds an mba degree from the university of birmingham he belongs to ias service of gujarat cadre 1985 batch born in orissa i think you are a gujarati by uh, <laughs> i am i am told he loves to listen to indian classical and sufi music does fo good photography sketching and painting and along with your routine gym you never miss i welcome shri grish chandra murmu on behalf of all of us and request him to share his valuable insights thank you dignitaries on the dais mr desai mr joshi all the esteemed members of the hamdabad management association captains of industries and management and ladies and gentlemen it is a privilege and i am very happy to be here to come back to this institution so earlier i have come here for different uh, occasion for different purpose because lot of training and other thing it happens and works of happens in that context i have been here it is always very happy to be with you and see how gujarat is progressing with your you know all of your efforts everyone is you know doing something or other here so when i was approached by mr joshi so i have been you know i was wondering what i would say here after coming here because you have already in the this sector in the management as well as in the private sector and all other works of life you have been doing all other thing like very excellently so in this context what i would say here i thought of coming here and i thought perhaps it will interest you something on the controller and auditor general of india and so the audit par se and also the corporate governance on that i thought i'll say a few thing certain thing of course i may not be able to touch because all these things are not in my domain and i am not uh, uh, very very uh, clear and uh, to be delve into that kind of a thing but uh, with that uh, i'll perhaps i'll give little bit brief history and little bit of our work and functions and you also all are aware you are many of our chartered accountants and things so the audit and other thing you fully you are involved so i'll just uh, say a few words about the our organizations uh, that may interest you you may be knowing it because every year see, you see that ag audits and kind of a thing and uh, always the three c's are very very despised kind of a thing the always they say these three c's 
like you know CVI and uh, 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 CAG and uh, that kind of vigilance kind of a thing is uh, impediment to certain things. But let me tell you, it is uh, truth is somewhere in between. It is not the truth because uh, CAG does not come into that kind of a thing. So it is and basically an accountability framework everywhere, every organization, there have to be some accountability framework, particularly in a democratic setup when the country is celebrating already the Amrit Mahatsav and now we are getting into the Amrit Kal. During the entire history, post-independence, we have gone through different phases of economic development since 47, at the various phases, the turning point came in the 90. Thereafter, the acceleration took place in everything from the industries to business to everywhere where the private sector and the public sector played very important role. But as you know, in a democracy, always in a representative government, there is an agent principle relationship. Under this relationship, including in your business, whosoever is in on the uh, helm of affairs of controlling the treasury or the finances has to be accountable. So the wherever responsibility and authority is there, accountability follows. That has to be accounted, particularly the representative uh, governments, because people cannot participate in the representative government. So uh, they are executives have to be accountable through parliament or through the legislature, that is the Westminster system of you know, governance or the democratic setup all over the, mostly the countries. But in India, you will be very happy to know that, uh, of course, uh, very ancient days, from the Kautilya days, the accountability framework is there. Ever since the accounting started in the Mesopotamia or the Sumerian, from wherever it has come, this framework has come. Also, Greek civilization, Aristotle also talked about the accountability, how the city government should be accountable, and uh, what kind of, how the, uh, your account has to be ma maintained in the public. How, that time like blockchain, he was saying that, you know, all the accounts should be distributed across the city wards. So it should not be concentrated and the, all this money to be dispelled to the public, whatever the funds are there in public and the account should be kept in different places. It is like a distributed ledger. So that is how it was uh, done. And then the recent history, it is in the Magna Carta, when King John acceded to that certain accountability to the parliament. Before that, kingship was there, entire Europe, it is different. But in India, since we are celebrating, we have very old tradition of the democracy, the village democracy, Janpad, and all kind of things were there. See, but in India, audit came up in 1858, the Government of India Act 1858, when the British Queen took over the reins from the East India Company. So the accountant generals from three presidencies, from Calcutta, Madras, and Mumbai, their accounts were consolidated, and the uh, controller and auditor general uh, came up in 1860. So we are 161 years old. So we just celebrated and we started our audit day to celebrate from the last two years we are doing it. That is on 16th November, uh, every year now we are celebrating. And uh, that time some awareness, etc. also we, we are doing it. But uh, it developed all the, you know, our autonomy and accountability, it came, and independence, it came uh, from time to time, the Government of India Act 1935, and the accounts and audit order of 1936 are crucial. Post-independence after the enactment of the Constitution of India, that time this was you know, debated in the, for almost a few months. And particularly Dr. V. R. Ambedkar attached lot of importance to the audit. He said that perhaps it is the much more important organization than the judiciary. And he fought it for and the controller and auditor general was created. But constitution gave, them, gave it to the independence. Completely it is independent of the legislature and the executive. Uh, the uh, the uh, expenditure of the controller and auditor general is charged upon the consolidated fund of India. It is not voted. So it cannot be cut. 
in the, the, the expenditure cannot be cut. It has to be, you know, there. And very interestingly, mostly globally, there are various system of, you know, audit. One is, you know, board of audit. There are a board. Majority, 80-90% there is only the single uh, controller and auditor or, or the auditor general is there. But there is board of audit and court of audit. There are around two dozen countries where it is a court system. So they have got judicial power also. They can call for the records and summons also and they can adjudicate. And they can give this kind of, these are basically the originally from France, Italy, and kind of that kind of countries, but now it is almost in certain African countries like Morocco and other also it is there. So our system remains that another interesting feature is that many uh, countries in the world, they have got you know federal st uh, structure. There is a different auditor for the state, even the local government like in the USA, and, and also and for the Union government, there is a separate, the federal government. But India, we have because, in spite of it is a federal government, it is a little bit of unitary kind of and uh, features are there, more centralized authority. So the controller and auditor generally also been entrusted to the audit of the state government also. So that is how we have an, a, a monocratic organization. As in, in a federal structure, it is a large, vast power. We have almost 130 plus offices. We have parallel audit, in, uh, audit as well as the accounts and entitlement, the pension and other thing you know. So here you have in Rajkot that office is there historically. So uh, that is where it is there. It is, this kind of things are there and you will be surprised we are total strength, staff strength is 41,000 plus. In spite of that, we do the commercial audit that commercial audit, we take the help of the chartered accountant. Every year we empanel, the process of empaneling of the chartered accountants are there, then they are assigned. Then uh, this, this is how we are, we are doing. We are not able to even uh, completely cover the boards, statutory boards. We have started those, those kind of audit. Interestingly, although we are known as Comptroller and Auditor General of India, the controller function is not there. What is the British Treasury? It used to be happening. Yes. Here the, it has gone to some function with the Treasury. Some control is the pay and account system has come in the offices. And this is how also there is a, uh, some kind of, you know, uh, emergence of certain thing it has happened, which has been becoming a challenging to see how to do the audit. So these are the few things which are happening this emergence of uh, thing, although we have this kind of independence and formally the parliament enacted the DPC Act, that uh, Duties, Powers and uh, Conditions Act in 1971. On that basis, it is mostly, it is a very small act. And uh, regulation making, of course, we do it and that was also not done earlier. So initially, people were only thinking that we are the account keepers of the governments. In income and expenditure and little bit of financial attestation or assurance, but and some compliance here and there. As you know, the audit is just you can describe in a, in a few one, two sentence. It is only to see the legality, propriety, transparency and accountability. But in these four words, there are lot many things are there. It is whether legal, it is legal authority is there it is under law notification, what is there. In every organization it is there. And propriety is basically a delegation of power. Who is a propriety, is, it is whether the correct person is, you know, exercising that power. And transparency you understand, and the accountability is there. But it has now added on to the economy efficiency and effectiveness. So we do the performance audit or the value for money audit. Now this is a very, maybe in two decades or kind of a thing which is very gaining uh, the, uh, the currency and that is the main thing. Now we have been doing this kind of a thing. So in that course of uh, things we have gained certain insight into the different aspects of accountability and uh, to our global connect, how we are exposed to the global activities, I will tell you that we have 
three offices in abroad, one in Washington and one in London, one in Kuala Lumpur. And still we are trying to have one more because Africa we are uh, uh, covering from Delhi only. Because all the embassies, all the PSCs, if they are working anywhere in the world, so we are supposed to audit them. So that's why we have an, uh, some setup in these countries. Plus, we are member of the global community. It is a parallelly, there is an international organization of Supreme Audit Institution. It's 195 countries are member. It is parallel like a general assembly. And it has a, a got, you know, every alternate or every two year there is a congress that happens. And uh, also, there are regional organizations, seven regional organizations like the ASEAN, Europe, European, Latin American, African, Caribbean, this kind of a thing. So we are regional also. At the same time, parallelly, we also are member of the, all these uh, uh, organizations, regional organizations like G20, BRICS, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, all these things. So we have been for after this pandemic, perhaps first time we are hosting everything. Yes. From the Shanghai Cooperation Organization also we did it. We did it BRICS also. We did it recently in the G20 and the, that is Supreme Audit Institutions. We said the SAI 20 also. And there are very, very important engagements uh, in that. Parallelly, this is another uh, assignments we have been doing. Also in the global forum, because International Standard of Audit and Accounts, there are uh, apex bodies. They are also mm -hmm. we represent. We are from the inception. We have been a chair of the knowledge sharing and knowledge service uh, committee. There are four, four, five committees there for the standard setting and professional pronouncement and this kind of uh, standards are there. We are our people are there, and other organizations are also there. And uh, we have been chairing. We have been chairing the UN panel of uh, audits. All the UN organizations are audited, 15, 16 countries they do. Fortunately, we are doing the large number. You know it. We have, this is again, we compete. Elections are there. Recently, we won the WHO, but before that, IAES, OPCW, FAO, Interparliamentary Union, all these things we have been doing and now we are continuing to do. Also, we have been elected as the chairman of the Asian organization from next year onwards, we will be hosting certain things. Even Commonwealth, I forgot. Commonwealth also, that is also uh, we had hosted earlier. Again, I think perhaps we will be hosting again this kind of a thing. So these are the few things. So in international standards, and also we are globally very known for the training, ITA training, Information Technology Audit. Then we have got an ICSA where uh, the globally almost 30-35 uh, countries uh, participants, we are training them. And uh, over the period of time, more than 6,000 uh, participants, we have trained them. And uh, also one on environmental audit. We have at Jaipur, as I said. In that also, we are pioneer. Now, looking to this kind of things, we are, our engagement globally has increased. And lot of uh, value additions are happening, lot of bilateral treaties we have done. Recently, almost uh, we are around 20, 21 countries we have done, and uh, more are coming. More countries are asking for their ha our help. That is some kind of uh, our people talk the secondment kind of an arrangement where we send our officers for, on deputation for some time. We have, we have a very long presence in Oman. Now we are training some officers from uh, Maldives. Now, New Zealand, again, we have thought of, they have asked us recently to send there, to set their systems. So we are doing this kind of job also. So our uh, uh, officers are highly trained. They come from, through the same UPSC service. And mostly, now all are technically qualified. 80% are engineers or, 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 or management professionals. And that kind of qualifications are there. So it is very easy to spearhead all these kind of things. But in the cutting edge also, we are trying to upgrade ourselves. But there are various challenges. These challenges are, I just I'll read out, nothing else. Basically, the local self-government. After the 73rd, 74th constitutional amendment, now third-tier government has come. Initially, it is the federal structure. 
now it is third tier government has also come <coughs> and successively finance commissions now directly giving grant to them so fourth uh, 14th finance commission now 15th finance commission, and they are certain performance related fronts are there without mm -hmm. audit it is very difficult so in 2002 the accounting standard was prescribed in consultation with the cag and it was for the urban local bodies it was uh, given but as you know urban local bodies except the corporations when municipalities don't have that kind of structure accounting structure cfo kind of things are not there so how they will manage and they have been prescribed double entry bookkeeping although the government is the cash based accounting but these people have been in this kind of a thing and we have 2.5 lakh panchayats they are also after some relaxation in 2009 the accounting standards have been now notified and it has been adopted of course it is cash based accounting but they don't have anything except talati nobody is there even talris are not there patwaris are not there many states so they don't get even the uh, fund their basic condition is they have to maintain account they have to be an elected body and they have to be some revenue raising capacity so if they don't have that kind of a thing so they would not get the basic grant after utilization certificate accounts if they don't finalize then they don't get, uh, get the even further installment uh, the forget about the performance uh, grant which is almost 10 percent of the entire grant they are supposed to get and 20 percent in the r1 and this is in in the five lakh crore in five year they get if you imagine 30 percent normally they will not get few will get this is what is happening so local uh, uh, governments uh, body governments are having a problem so we are thinking because this is a domain of the state government the department of local uh, uh, fund examiners that is but they have not been strengthened so how to handhold them we are giving them technical guidance and we have also started now the verticals we are trying in a big way to do that so that we can help them without you know getting into their shoes and their you know uh, domain uh, so but it's a very delicate balance but lot of money is going apart from that lot of government schemes are uh, coming there similarly years back in 80s the district rural development agencies came so became they became a society our uh, societies again audit is again a different uh, domain again the challenges come you know when the infrastructure now in the gati sakti you see almost 14 departments are there and most of them have a ppp kind of thing and hybrid annuity and boots and other kind of a thing so how to do that this is another challenge this is even the chartered accountant will have a problem to how to challenge because even certain schemes are now through implemented through the societies and parastatals and they are they escape this accountability framework so this is the real challenge it is for everybody the social audits are there social audits have been now you know mandated in certain thing but as you know that social audit again has not uh, crystallized properly in the on the ground in, in spite of uh, gram sabhas and all kind of uh, things under the pesa act and all where the there should be a local participation but it has not happened plus the emerging technology emerging business model e-commerce and all including gst and other taxation authorities they are having a problem so in that audit again the digital currency like crypto that's that's have come up it is including the private sector will have a problem how to capture these long distance transactions which is in the sphere of you know, uh, internet in the cloud how to do that these are the basic major kind of a thing very fortunately we have adopted technology since that we have now digitized everything in our uh, audit from the first april this year it will be on the digital space the paperless audit we have all this infrastructure we have created we have our data analytics we are also using now in limited way machine learning and artificial intelligence artificial intelligence itself has a challenge recently we have g20 in the sci20 we have been deliberating even the seo on the responsible you know usage of uh, ai which is another big challenge along with blue economy 
the blue economy also is a challenge. As you know, the blue economy is you know very big economy. It is almost uh, it it it, uh, it it is you know in the G20 countries they cover almost the 85 percent of you know uh, the uh, trade, 75 percent of GDP in these countries, and uh, around three billion people access the oceans for their livelihood, and uh, almost 80 percent of uh, sea trade are on the you know through through the oceans only apart from other things so this is again we audit in the coastal regulation zone rivers and irrigation but all disjointed mineral resources the sustainable development goals now it is the midterm review will be coming where the milestone is 20 25 and ultimately 30 then all this conference of parties on biodiversity on climate change and their milestones Again, we are supposed to also audit the sustainable development goals, how the governments are prepared, how much they have achieved. So globally, lot many issues are there. So you can see our challenges are uh, there, including the private sector, how to account for this thing. In this context, now I'll, I think a lot of audit I talked about, I should now talk about the little bit corporate governance, but nothing very new. The corporate governance is as usual, it is whether in the public sector or the private sector, it is the same. See, they are the, all things are there, Every, maybe somewhere it is the profit is the bottom line, other where the economic return may be the thing, or the social with the statutory co co commitment kind of a thing, but mo mostly the management structures and the uh, overarching acts are companies act, regulation by the corporate affairs in the government, our challenges have become when these uh, companies become Navratna, Mini Ratna, Maharatna, so the different kind of things and they have a global uh, exposure like uh, ONGC Bidesh, NTPC somewhere else. So this kind of thing once happens, then another challenge it is coming. As usual, we have a different challenge. Most during the 80s and 90s, the mushroom growth of public sector enterprise came up. Most of them are sick. They have eroded totally network. They have become dead bodies. And most of the governments are, you know, just carrying these dead bodies. And we have been auditing them. Lot of investment is there. There is no return. S only few are making certain profit and it is a burden on the exchequer. And we are trying in our annual audit to tell them these are the audit earlier. Either you, you know, close them or revive them. Unnecessarily carrying is a difficult thing because it is unsustainable. When a railways, recently we had a seminar, they have almost 46 boards and corporations. Uh, one, only one. And you think of, we have more than 1,000 uh, state le level and the union level board and corporations. And we are, every year we are supposed to audit. So we have devised certain kind of a thing. And same thing, years together, people have not even finalized their accounts. Five years, ten years, and this is the major problem you may not be seeing in the private sector, this kind of a thing. At least some accounts are being finalized, something has been happening. But in the public sector, this is what is happening. But it varies from region to region, state to state. But this is, this is the thing. Another thing we see in the financial audit is the sustainability. It is a lot of uh, talk happened, you know, how sustainability post-COVID because the fiscal deficit and revenue deficit, it is widening. It is almost uh, too much, you know, which was in the 14th Finance Commission said that the fiscal deficit should not be more than 60 percent combined with the state and the union government. Now we have almost reached 90 percent. Okay, in the emerging economy, there is the sustainability issues come. So we, since we are auditing and we are also interested with the FRBM Act. So we give our comments on that. And we have been seeing certain states, they have become almost unsustainable. This is only the fiscal deficit. That the way they give the guarantees, and I don't want to delve into that, the free wage. The free freebies, the event it is happening, we don't call free wage because what is free wage not defined. Only think how it is sustainable. What is sustainability? So sustainability part also we are grappling on that. There are hidden subsidies. There are subsidies you can see. There you can see so many things. 
but there is an hidden subsidy. There is an implied subsidy. It's to capture those things that get the real sustainability is a real is a big big task. We have a very good audit advisory board. We have very eminent people in our board, so we discuss certain subject. We have uh, economists like you know our Dhodakia and uh, our earlier CA like uh, Mr. Desai. We have Devi Sethi. We have Maru Praja. We have uh, uh, that uh, also Gulati agriculture economist. And this kind of people in our boards, so and a few uh, ex bureaucrats also in the administration, we are trying to frame certain things. But it is really a very gigantic kind of a thing. So, in the corporate level, apart from the disclosure norm, board, con constitutions, uh, and um, uh, uh, audits, uh, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, audit committees, formation, women uh, members. All these are prevalent because I feel few things are very crucial for the uh, companies or the government or whatever. At least you should have internal mechanism for control. Internal audit is including or the concurrent audit is very, very crucial in every organization. Then you will avoid certain things. But although the companies that mandate that certain uh, turnover or certain kind of a company should have, perforce they should have an internal auditor system, but mostly we see in the government it is absent. I don't know, you, the private companies must be having every year. That is not there. That is one thing. Second thing is composition of the audit committee. That is the basic thing which is sometimes absent in the, uh, particularly the state PSUs. So this is a real challenge for us. Accounts are not available. There is no audit committee, no internal control. Then years together, then this is how we see. So I thought of uh, this kind of uh, things are, are very crucial in the corporate governance. But corporate governance, as you fr from the management, uh, this organization, I feel it is only the professional ethics and uh, how your framework is there, the individual ethics and professional ethics. Nothing can, you know, mm -hmm. be, you know, above that. Without that, all framework, accountability framework does not work. However, we have so much of rules, regulations, we have got corporate affairs, now NAFRA and all kind of thing. But in spite of all these things, unless there is a sound system in an organization and it is totally followed, it is, according to me, it is very difficult. Earlier when I was in Gujarat, I was heading certain companies as a CMD, MD and all kind of things. I have seen, uh, for long I was associated with the corporate governance. I remained CMD and MD of the GIIC, then uh, Gujarat Chemical Port Terminal, CEO of uh, Gujarat Maritime Board, and also GSFC and all, and when some private sector also. And the venture capital also, Gujarat Venture Finance Limited, that also I remain chair. So I have seen that kind of thing, the uses, the business, uh, what challenges are there. Uh, that is the thing. In the private sector, that's why perhaps like us have to be now wary of this thing, how your internal control system has to be strengthened, how business ethics has to be brought in how commitment has to be brought in, plus the emerging technology and challenges in the global connect. How you are going to do it? The emerging technology will be uh, difficult uh, to see. It changes every day, almost. Every new things are emerging. That uh, you cannot uh, uh, upgrade your infrastructure and capability overnight. But the problems come overnight. So how are you going to have this kind of thing? Because of the disclosure public, uh, particularly those who are listed companies. Unless it is disclosure to the stakeholder is correct, then market manipulation, you know it can happen. The sensex can go heavier and anything can happen. You saw many recent examples are there, how in the globally it has happened in the American bank and the Swiss bank and including in India because of this kind of prudence like ILFS and kind of thing. I've seen how ILFS came down. But I was, uh, I was indirectly, directly there in the financial sector, that's why I have seen what happened, how it happened, what kind of structures they have, what kind of they have jugglery. You know the 
at uh, creative accounting that is uh, not enough more than that they have been doing so different kind of things were, were there so this is the real challenges in the corporate governance but uh, having said that you will have to upgrade with the emergent technology and the average business models and also international regulations and the barriers in the post uh, uh, this uh, ukraine you can see the different things are emerging and in this situation it is very delicate situation and globally do you see some kind of and slowing of an economy is there we are fortunate that we could manage it and we have now in a silver lining in this entire dark cloud so we have been a good one of the fastest growing economy but we have to catch up lot of thing so many things are there we are very comfortable in the foreign exchange uh, reserve our inflation is under control but we will have to watch over that because seasonal things influence the your cpi index is influenced by so many things even global market that imported inflation can come so many things can happen in this context uh, as an auditor as an you know a responsible citizen in the private sector because without private sector participation we cannot have this sustained uh, gdp as the government has done tremendously good they have increased the capital expenditure year on year lot of things are in the infrastructure and they have lot of uh, innovation they have done like the lot of dvts you see particularly this uh, jam trinity is uh, wonderful the upi has you know is an is an wonder for the global community how this things are happening billions of transaction and trillions of rupees are happening these are the success stories but we will have to watch over that that is the thing how they are functioning how technologies are functioning the private sector also have to come up and uh, i think real interest rate are still there uh, positive we have a certain leverage there and uh, without uh, investment we cannot sustain and the government investment howsoever will increase will have in some catalytic role but it private sector has to come so the distinguished guest and the the audi your audience who you are associated i think this is the thing this is uh, sabke sath is uh, sabka prayas is required this without prayas it is very difficult uh, now it is main thing is that so i don't want to give you so much of thing from monologue from here because you all understand the management business very well in the gujarat this soil it is the ecosystem so i don't want to see in the corporate governance or other kind of a thing neither on the audit since i wanted <laughs> to come here and i thought of give you some kind of an overview perhaps i will be you know very interested in interacting with you with these words i thank you very much for calling me thank you very much can we have some questions here yeah. uh, contrary to the uh, general impression of government service or officers i have a high regard regarding bureaucracy and uh, we see that uh, uh, foreign uh, affairs or uh, commerce and industry or railway or, and there are many ministries and they are working at uh, day and night and doing good things so in this region Uh, and you are the close uh, <laughs> officer of the uh, today's uh, government so uh, which uh, good and positive things you uh, mind or you uh, observe at uh, in your tenure thank you very much for the very interesting questions you know my yeah uh, thank you very much for the question okay yeah. but you know now i used to be in the government but now in a in a safe distance i am the elbow length uh, i am there because i am supposed to be the auditor because i am the watchdog so now i watch over the government and functioning every year but nevertheless definitely there is a very paradigm shift is there 
towards development, towards growth, towards our global connects, and like the infrastructure in this difficult time also, the way we the handle the pandemic, the way we handle the, these other issues, this is uh, tremendous. And this is all because of the visionary leadership and uh, very decisive, decisive government. That is you required. Because again, one thing I forgot, all governments and all companies are in India, they are suffering from the one thing is that is an cost overrun and time overrun. Most of the government infrastructure are in the cost overrun and time overrun. This is humongous. That has been cut to great extent. So you can see on the ground the development taking place. Otherwise, it is, you know, years together. We have seen which was earlier plan, like in the health infrastructure, Pan India, we are doing the status check of how the health infrastructure and the emergency uh, response is there. We have almost completed this thing. We are, uh, you know, state-wise, we are doing it. We will compile in this thing. We, you see lot many uh, medical college and AMS like institutions were conceived in long back. It took years together to implement. And after implementation, after the infrastructure came, even it is not fully functional. And in the what is the norm against the norm? We don't manufacture norm. We go by the government norm or the policies. Against that, when we examine, it is far away. Like the number of PSC, CHC, or uh, and other thing, you know, healthcare you want, it is except few uh, states. Many states, they are in a half or less than that also. So in this kind of, in the normal time, you have an infrastructure. The abnormal time, how you will do better performance? This is directly proportional to your efficiencies. It cannot have wonders in a certain thing. But because of our resilience, the kind of people here, the family and other things are there, our institutions, in this pandemic, we have stood up we become resilient. Uh, this is good thing. Only one thing that I say that it is decisive, it is very, very focused, and this is the golden time. If we miss this thing, perhaps according to me, we'll miss it. Because whatever we have been lagging behind, we can do now. Now it is on certain level, it is in the autopilot, it should come. And that is where the people's participation and the private sector participation is required to come out. There are certain issues in the business. I know it, but I'll not discuss it. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, we can overcome with uh, the government's efforts. If we all do it, we can overcome. And we are here as an auditor to point out. We are almost like a concurrent audit because big projects are for the years going. So every uh, alternate year, year, we are taking up and we are able to show the, what is the where they are lagging behind, and how, where the things can be uh, fixed, how funds can be, because in the resources are, as you know, they are very limited. If you do a cost over 200 time, so you are depriving other uh, you know, projects, the opportunity cost is gone. So you are simply you know, <laughs> spreading this thing in the same project, same uh, thing, you are spending much more than that, which otherwise you could have spent for some other thing. And you could have created certain infrastructure. That is the my main concern in the corporate governance is that. Even the government scheme also. And uh, all other things are there. So perhaps it is good thing it is happening and ex we expect that. And I think governments are very responsible. I have uh, uh, changed after I, because it's like, you know, we are like an investigator. Now I have become an, you know, facilitator. We are doing the catalyst role. We have now brought in, I have now, uh, you know, told our state level, the AGs and PA, uh, principal AGs, to have close coordination with the government. And even the entry and exit conference you can have with the <coughs> chief minister and the concerned ministers, so because minister would not know what is happening in their department. Now we have started to approach the, and they are very happily responding. And the chief minister also are giving us time, and our people are giving you know long hours to you know discuss certain things, and they are very very you know happy in that. Even in the union government, the ministers have been told that you should pay heed to the audits. So the, the compliance has increased. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
as you said uh, you surely might be advising uh, uh, from the senior or at the center level but uh, on this august platform of fraternity as a management uh, organization have you uh, any points for even government of gujarat and the corporates which are here in audience to give away thank you i only can will say few thing only two thing only because it is whether private sector or the government sector the thing is that uh, we will have to have we will have to increase our eff efficiency and effectiveness transparency and accountability you all know it that is there because with that then you can be, uh, do a justice to certain thing so that is always there otherwise you will be failing in that in your efficiency and uh, uh, effectiveness also that is output and uh, outcome we should be output and outcome oriented whether it is in the business or whether in the uh, government sector unless we focus on that thing and we will be again falling into the same trap of the time over and uh, the, uh, the cost over and, and uh, squandering away the limited resources and we will have to do the sustainability now sustainability is the big issue thank you old public sector units you know which you know legacy issues are something they are yeah. huge losses and we have examples like air india though that is a different thing it, yeah. the privatization but again so much of assets are locked up and all now as you're playing a role of a catalyst what is your take or recommendations to you know make this unproductive assets productive for the national exchequer basically privatization or the disinvestment it was started with this government Niti Aayog came out with around 126 uh, union governments uh, uh, PSCs to be divested, disinvested. But the process was like that so many practical issues are there. So it was becoming a very difficult, but nevertheless now it has become a, you know, what the Prime Minister said that governments should be no, not in a business, they, they, they are not in the business, they have no business to be in business. So that is the motto. Earlier it was being divested to have a non-tax revenue. It was like that. The uh, uh, entire concept was to have some kind of you know, fund because the tax revenues are, you know, to supplement, you have to divest certain things. But this kind of paradigm shift has come. And that's why we are trying to tell the state governments, union government is aware, the state government that you should also do this, uh, you know, uh, what is called uh, uh, your uh, reality check and kind of a thing, what you want to do and what you are desire burden. They have outlived their, you know, uh, utility, purpose. their objective and purposes. So they are no longer required. Maybe in 80s or 60s they were required. When the private sector had not come in a big way, they may be required. Now after post-liberalization 90s, certain things are not required. Statutory corporation, I understand. You have a bus service, or road transport, or the electricity here and there. The electricity is also unbundling is required. Okay. But uh, there are certain things you can uh, think that, okay, this is uh, in a, in a public service. You will have to do it in a subsidized basis. But in the commercial organization, into, into the electronics, manufacturing, everywhere you are there. So why, why it is required? According to me, perhaps they have to relook the, those kind of things. And definitely when the net worth has gone and it has become burden. You have an asset. Government has already created for the asset monetization. They have already thought of some uh, big uh, target is there. And, uh, but uh, certain you know, practical issues are there. So perhaps uh, I can say, say a few things because I know that thing. Because most of this board corporation, whatever their assets are there, even they don't know. They have not been in their property card in certain things, like in the telecom sector and other things. They know that this is our property. They don't know. It is encroached. They have never tried, because this I had done in GIC. Yes. We had given loan, and we have uh, hypothecated everything, but it has not been you know, recorded in Satvara or the property card. So first I, I did this uh, massive drive on that. Then I started this Patani recovery. <laughs> After that, I recovered that, then we look at this thing. This is what has happened. Practically, I had done this thing. So I have seen 
Air India, when di divested, I was there in the expenditure secretary. So whatever uh, fund we had to give, because I have been there. Similarly, the restructuring of the uh, MTNL, BSNL, that is also, I was uh, part of that. So I know even this Uday scheme, when it came, initially, it was you know handled by me. So I, <laughs> I, I, I have a privy to certain things. I hope that it will, it will you know, bring result in that. Thank you. Hello, sir. Sir, my question is, uh, in the past uh, uh, government, we see uh, Mr. Vinodra has presented many reports uh, and uh, beyond baseline. So uh, we haven't seen any reports like this during uh, uh, this tenure. So is there any possibility that, uh, or is there any uh, pressurized uh, system there? What is your opinion, sir? See, these are once in a while. It is not Vinodra uh, alone. Earlier also, you see, long back, uh, the buffers also came. These are very natural. It has come up because the audit process will bring out certain things. It is how being used by the different uh, stakeholders. That is the thing. Whatever the audit brings, as we say that, uh, with evidence, we cannot in a uh, in the audit cannot uh, manufacture anything out in the out of blue. So it has to be, because all your policies are yours, because we don't uh, examine through any other policies, policy or whatever your things are, it is the government or the whichever the organization, institutions, against that we examine. Again, with your records and your activities, we don't create any record again. So only we see certain standard, wherever it is the absence is there, it is the globally accepted standard. Otherwise, Otherwise, we don't do. Against that, we bring out. Now, how it is being, you know, sensationalized or not, that is a different thing. <laughs> so, this is we don't get, but now also we do, because wherever these things were there, we, because we, we are supposed to bring it out. It is to the policy makers, public, and the executive to mend it or the fix it. Many times, it is the, uh, we, contrary to the, our opinion, at the highest level, sometimes people have not, they may not have this kind of the correct information what is happening. So in this kind of a thing, in audit kind of thing, they get this to know what is, where to fix it. So that is how we are getting good result now, good <coughs> response from the policy makers. That is good thing and I, we have also tried to uh, reorient ourselves our uh, people, our proactivity and kind of thing, we are trying to reorient ourselves, looking as a very, very rigid to becoming a more complementary. We are trying to do that because ultimately, all the audit, according to me, is for the good governance, for the effective governance. So we have to play that kind of role rather than obstructionist or kind of a thing. You know, that is so many other agencies are there, we are our major things are there. So they will see. It is not our job. Thank you. <laughs> Any other question? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ahmedabad Management Association, I would like to express our deep sense of gratitude to Sri Grishandra Burmosap. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for delivering thought-provoking talk on public sector audit and corporate governance. Sir, it is indeed quite interesting to know various aspects related to the subject matter. The AMA has been at the uh, forefront of promoting knowledge sharing and professional development. Today's event stands as a testament to its dedication in providing platform for learning and growth. We feel honored and personally thankful to have had the privilege of listening to uh, Murmu Sahib, a distinguished personality who has made significant contribution to the field of public administration. Uh, to all, I mean, we have feedback form placed on your uh, chair. I would request you to kindly fill in that feedback form and leave it, to, uh, leave it for us. May we all strive for excellence in our professional endeavors and work towards a more transparent, transparent and accountable for prosperous future. Thank you all for coming here to Ahmedabad. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know, I know, because I have come in certain thing, you know, that time. So I have been here.